Pretty good. Hey everyone, Jerry Mitchellark here. This is the second part of our reloading series. This is bullet selection, and that's a huge topic. What I want to talk to you a little bit about is cast bullets and how things have changed since I came into existence in the shooting realm back in the 70s. So it doesn't sound like that long ago, it's about 50 years. But anyway, <laughs> when I first started shooting, cost factor was everything. A 20 round box of 44 magnums lasted, I don't know, five minutes. And then I was looking for something to do. So but we, we learned early on, if we were going to shoot these things, we had to feed them. So we came up with bullet casting to extend our shooting performances and also the cost factor where we could shoot more. And uh, give you an idea what cast bullets can do for you. There are some ranges where you cannot shoot a jacketed bullet on steel, like cowboy action and such, where you're pretty much mandatory that you shoot a lead bullet without a jacket. So in that aspect, you're, kind of, you're extremely limited to your bullet selection, but in competition, my go-to bullet, of course, would be a jacketed bullet. As I said, there's several factors for that. You're not going to beat the accuracy of a jacketed bullet. Hornady is one of my sponsors. Like these 158 XTPs in my revolver, they'll shoot easy, easy two inches at 50, so if my gun is of any quality. And a lead bullet can do it too, but there's a couple of factors to consider when you're shooting a, a, a lead bullet, and one is the airborne lead uh, problem and also on your hands. So if you shoot a lot, you have to really concern yourself more with lead contamination. Jacketed bullets help negate that, especially a bullet that has a, a base that's encapsulated, like a hollow point. There's two factors there. One, the airborne lead, and the other one is how much smoke is in the air when I'm shooting rapid fire. A lot of competitions that we shoot, you're in a confined area, so the less amount of smoke you make per shot, is always a plus factor, low light conditions, uh, rapid fire. Uh, it's very important that your ammunition smokes the least amount as possible so you can see what you're doing. But anyway, give you an idea, cast bullets, guys. I've probably shot a million and a half of them, and I've shot just about every configuration. That's what's fun about casting your own projectile, is that you can buy a mold to take just about any caliber to any weight. So you can customize your bullet to your application, give you an idea. This is a uh, 230 grain 357 Magnum bullet. It's a flat point. That's kind of a custom item. You don't see that in a jacketed. You can go down to 95 grain bullets and 38s. It's pretty much endless. And the amount of uh, variety of sizes and shapes and calibers. I probably own, I don't know, maybe 150 bullet molds of different kinds. So to me, it's part of the whole game. I want to learn how to feed it. If there's one thing my dad taught me when I was young, he said, if you own it, you better know how to work on it. So if I had a gun, I better know how to feed it. I want to know every aspect of it. So it's just fun, guys. If you like working with your hands, it makes a great hobby. Give me an idea of what's happened in the last few years. And that is the coatings that you can put on a cast bullet to make it more uh, user friendly. It keeps the smoke down, keeps the airborne lead down. And it also allows you to shoot rather poor quality alloy and still get a good performance out of it. What you want to realize back in the day when I was shooting, the only way to make a cast bullet really accurate was to make it as hard as possible. And that kind of, it brought the cost factor up. More tin, it had to have more antimony in it to make it harder. Pure lead, uh, you couldn't really shoot it at any speed or it would lead your barrel really bad. And what's good about a coating, it does two functions. It'll help lubricate the bullet so you don't have to have a wax lubricant like the old days like this bullet is lubricated with. So you can use a modern coating and you can shoot a lesser quality lead, a more pure lead at a higher velocity and not getting any barrel leading. So what you want to realize when you fire a bullet, the job of that bullet of course is to conform to the bore and its secondary uh, purpose is to act as a seal. So you want to realize once you cook off that powder charge, it's trying to pass that bullet up as it pushes that bullet down the bore. So the outside diameter of the bullet is where all the pressure is. And that's where all the problems come in when you shoot a soft alloy. If you have a really high pressure uh, propellant in the case, it'll cut the bullet as it's going down the bore. You get extreme leading. Accuracy is going to be nil and you're not going to have a good day. So a coating actually makes the exterior of the bullet a lot harder than what it would naturally be as a raw cast bullet. Uh, this is a coating sold by a high performance bullet coating company, which is my little brother. He's also a shooter from way back. We've shot a zillion rounds together. A few years back, we were, we were talking about bullets, cast bullets and how to improve them. And he started, he started researching different coatings and he came up with this coating. It's called high tech. Uh, it's been a great advancement. A lot of commercial casters use it now 
on their finished product. You can see they make 11 different colors. So if you want a bullet style or configuration in a different color so you can, out, you can look a little different on the range, you have that feature. So back in the day, we just shot raw lead with a wax lubricant. Now you have these, all these different colors and different coatings you can put on bullets. Give you an idea, there's a friend of mine who casts and he uses powder coat. That's some of his powder coated 45, 70 bullets. Uh, the high tech lubricant, uh, I mean high tech coating acts as a lubricant also, seals the bore, less lead in the atmosphere. Your bore is gonna run cleaner. So if you don't need the precision of a jacketed bullet, a true jacketed bullet, and you're shooting in places that the regs won't let you shoot a jacketed bullet, this would be another choice that you can go to. Uh, it works relatively well. I've shot a lot of it. Back in the day when I was doing a lot of rapid fire training, bullet cost was very paramount to me, how much I spent in a day on ammunition. So this helped me fulfill my shooting dreams by using cast bullets. So to me, it's also a lot of fun. You can see all the different molds here. Like I said, I probably got 150 of them, maybe more. And what's really fun about them, you can, you can tailor the alloy to the, to the mold, to the bore. And what you want to realize, the, uh, the more pure lead you have, the more shrinkage you have. So a bullet mold is actually made, it's the, di the diameter of the cavity is actually calibrated to a mixture of lead and not pure lead. So the softer you make a bullet, the more it shrinks. So you have to have the bullet mold made pretty much to your alloy type to make a precision bullet. And that's something you want to think about. And that's some of the fun of, uh, of casting. You can make your own alloys. You can harden them. You can water quench them. And that's something about a lead bullet a lot of people don't realize. Uh, you can actually drop it in water as you cast and it'll quench it and make it, make it hard as glass. It'll make it so hard it's actually brittle. So you can, you, can temper, you can temper lead as you cast or you can temper it in the oven later. And either way makes an extremely hard bullet. So you can, you can do that. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun things, guys. You can, it's pretty much endless what you want to do with it. To give you an idea, I've got a, I've got a lead pot going on the back, back out on the back side of the shop here. We're going to run out there and do a little casting. So give you an idea of some of the coatings, 11 different, uh, 11 different flavors, or you can go traditional wax. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of choices, a lot of fun. Let's go cast a few. Hey everyone, I got my old casting pot out. One thing you want to do, we, we've let it melt down for quite some time. We're going to flux it. I'm going to use some gloves. You want to research what's the proper safety equipment. I'm by no means an expert. Uh, you got to have eye protection. You got to have some skin protection. So I've done this enough. I know what I'm doing to this point. So, but if you want to start bullet casting, I do suggest that you go to the manufacturers and always heed their warnings on safety and what it takes you to be safe. I'm out in the open, so that's a good thing with, with fumes and vapors. I've got an old candle here. And I've got a spoon, and what you want to be aware of, anytime you stick something into molten lead, if it has any moisture on it, it's going to pop right back in your face. So, I'm going to be careful with the spoon, make sure that it's, uh, it's good and dry. So I'm going to put a little bit of paraffin in there, take out some of the impurities. This is really a dirty batch of lead here, guys. Woo. We tried to just take some stuff out of the bullet trap, give you an idea of what's in there. And it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of unburned target and target paper and tape. All right. I think we're good to go for a minute. All right. So I've got a Lee bullet mold. They make aluminum molds. They're probably the easiest thing to start the cast with. They're pretty, they're pretty much foolproof to use. This is a 405 grain uh, 4570 bullet or 45 caliber. It comes out at about 458 with this alloy. So you can set the, uh, the drip pressure, how fast or how slow with this, of course, the, the little uh, adjustment here on the top. I've done this enough and this is just like a show and tell for you. So we're just gonna run a few. The first few bullets you're gonna make, of course, they're gonna cool relatively quick and they're not gonna look like too much of anything. But as you, uh, as you cast, the mold will get hotter and hotter, and you see the sprue temperature is going to change. And what's really neat about the aluminum molds, uh, they cool off. So what you notice, everything started cooling down real quick. We just had a generator hooked up to the pot. When I cut the generator off, the pot got too cold too quick. But give you an idea, and just four castings there. 
the mold was just starting to get up the temperature. It's not unusual that you take six, eight, maybe 20, 20 bullets, depends on the mold, and it'll get up the temperature and you're up and rolling. So that's just a concept of how to get into bullet casting. So safety first, good ventilation, some protection, and have fun. Get out. All right, everybody, we're out here on the range. Uh, what I'm going to start off with is the Hornady 158 XTPs. This is my go-to bullet if I'm going to do anything accuracy oriented or competition oriented. Just give you an idea of uh, the smoke factor or lack of. I've got seven rounds and we're just going to slow fire on that steel. You just watch the muzzle, see what it looks like. Feel pretty good. <laughs> now we're going to go to the high tech coating. This is a cast bullet again with a with a synthetic coating on it. One thing you probably want to do when you switch from a jacketed to a coated bullet is to go ahead and clean your bore completely, get any metal fouling out. I don't have time to do that, so we're just going to shoot them the way it is. So here we go, high tech. Here we go. Pretty good. Now let's go old school. We got plain lead with the wax lubricant. Something we used to shoot back in the old days. Give you an idea. When I first started reloading, my buddy and I were loading 38 specials like this for like 30, 30 to 35 cents a box. So definitely the way to go for economics. Here we go. As you can see, quite a difference. So, so there you have it, guys. We went retro, we went modern, and we went jacketed. So there you have it. Cast bullets, get some. Hey, everybody. I want to give a shout out to the companies that supported this little video project. Of course, Bayou Bullets, Gallant Bullets, SNS Casting, Summers Enterprises, and Pyrocast Bullets USA all sent these samples in for us to shoot and have a good time with. And for more information on high tech products, uh, there will be a link in the description box below.